Hi, this is Mike Kent with Introduction to Visual Basic Programming, ITSE 1331. And in this series of videos, I'm going to be talking about how combo boxes and list boxes work, what the important properties are for each of those, and how we write code to manipulate them and work with them. First example is called combo boxes. Let me launch it so we can take a look at it. And in this example, we've got three combo boxes. Now they're called combo boxes because they're a combination of a text box and a list box, except you only see the list when you hit the little down arrow. All I did to add these to my form was to come over to the toolbox and double click on the combo box control. Now these are all the same combo box, but there's three different styles. You have to set a property called drop down style to get each of the three styles. So combo one, if I come over to my properties window, you'll see its drop down style is drop down. Combo box two, its drop down style is simple. And combo three, the drop down style is drop down list. So the drop down style is the normal combination box you see. You can type in it the text box portion of it, you can hit the drop down list to pick something out of that. Combo 2, the list is always down, but you can also type in the text portion. Then Combo 3, you can only choose items from the list. You can't type anything into the text property. Let me run the program, show you what's going on here, show you all the exciting things this program does. So Combo box number 1 has different fruits in it, and I can pick a fruit. I can also type up here if I want. Combo 2, I can either type something in or I can pick it from the list. And finally, combo number 3, I can only pick from the list. Now, there's two important properties that we have to know about for both combo boxes and list boxes and I've listed them here in these labels selected index and items dot count so selected index is a property that tells me which item in the list box the user has clicked on so Apple believe it or not is item selected index 0 so right now in my second box I'm clicked on the 8 which is the fourth item in the box but it's selected index 3. That's kind of weird. Now the reason it's off is because Visual Basic combo boxes and Windows combo boxes start counting the first item as item 0. So I have five items in the combo box list box. If I click on the last one, the selected index is 4. So the selected index is run from 0 to 4. That's five different things. Once again, if I click on the first item, the selected index is zero. How, uh, one other thing about selected index right here is if I say clear all selections, nothing is selected in any one of these boxes anymore. And you notice the selected index became negative one. So negative one is how we look at our code. In code, that's how we look to see if the user failed to click on something they were supposed to. I'm gonna stop the program now and let's look at some code because anytime the user clicks on an item in one of these combo boxes I'm updating the selected index label and I'm updating items.count so I'm actually gonna double click on combo box number one bring up its code window and you see the event that goes with the combo box changing is combo one underscore selected index change so selected index change is triggered anytime the user or as a programmer we write code that changes the selected index of a list box or a combo box so what am I gonna do when the selected index changes well I'm gonna update the index the selected index let's look combo one dot selected index that's either going to be negative 1, nothing is selected, 0, 1, 2, 3, 4, etc. For whichever item in the list is selected, I'm going to turn it into a string, a number with zero decimal places, and put it into the label, label combo 1 index. And now I'm going to do the same thing 
for combo two and the same thing for combo three. So anytime the user changes the selection in the combo box, it's going to update this label because that's the code I wrote in selected index changed. Now finally, if I come over here and look at clear all selections, look what I'm doing here. Combo one dot selected index equals negative one. Same thing for the other two combo boxes. When I set the selected index to negative one, since the selected index then changed, that's going to trigger the selected index change event and update the label. So I don't have to put this line of code right here in my button to clear it because it'll get triggered automatically. So the properties we care about right now are selected index, that's which one the user clicked on, and items.count, that's how many items are in the combo box. Now you noticed when this program ran, I'm going to just hit F5 to run the program, that the combo boxes are populated. How did that happen? How did this stuff magically get into the combo boxes? Well, it wasn't magic. There's two ways you can do it. You can do it in your Visual Basic code, or you can set a property. So if I just double click on this form right here, you can see we have the event form load. That happens once when the program originally is run and the very first time the window pops up. Look what I'm doing here. I'm saying combo one items.add, that's the method to put something into a list box via code. I'm saying add apple, add pear, add grape. Okay, then look what I'm doing on combo two. Add the number one, add the number two. Now I'm, I'm putting them in quotes because I'm adding strings to this list box. And then finally, the third combo box, I'm adding Mercury, Atlas, Titan, Saturn, Aries. So I'll run the program again and the order I added them is the order they showed up. Now the other way I can add them to my uh, combo boxes is you click on the combo box, you come over to your properties window and we're looking for the items property and it's a collection. If I hit this pop up here I can type, I can just type some things in. So this, I'm on combo box one, I'm gonna add uh, Al, Susan, and of course, I always have to work a Bubba into my examples, so there's Bubba. Now if I run the program, you'll see combo one has Al, Susan, Bubba. Now I'm still adding the items in my form load, so they just get added on to the end. So you can do it both ways, or you can do it one way or the other. You know, in reality, this kind of stuff is probably loaded from a data file, but that's beyond the scope of this example. We don't want to get into that. So, that is the important properties. And we looked at the add method, items.add, to add things to a combo box. One other property I might mention is, like, if I click on combo number one, there is, if I go down to the S's, see if I can get down there successfully. There is a sorted property. Right now it's set to false. If I set it to true, anything that gets added to the combo box will get put into the combo box in alphabetical order. So now you can see Al is first, then Apple, Banana, and uh, Bubba's the second banana below Banana. Susan's last. So that is the sorted property and I want to make sure I don't leave that turned on when I exit this program, but that is all I got for you on the first example.